Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me today as we talk about the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant that I just received. Uh, I probably waited about three to four months for uh, it to arrive after placing the order with Sporties. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the setup, um, how I have it configured in my flight deck. Um, maybe you can uh, take away some ideas that you might find useful. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in and uh, talk about the Quadrant. Okay, so my first challenge was to decide where best to mount the throttle quadrant. If you place this where it's designed to be mounted on the desktop, uh, I find it takes up too much real estate. You know, I need to be able to use my mouse. I've got a uh, Garmin 660 that I mount uh, also uh, to use in conjunction with my uh, iPad over here. So for me, I manufactured this bracket using the instrument mounting holes uh, that come with the throttle quadrant. And I just made, manufactured a plate, drilled the holes in it, and then I have a couple of holes here and here. And now if I can do this with one hand, just to kind of show you where it's gonna go, uh, it's gonna go here underneath. So that's kind of the idea. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and mount it and we'll pick up the video there. Okay, so using the bracket, I've got this temporarily mounted with these clamps and uh, to determine where best to position it, where I get adequate leg clearance while using the rudder pedals. So uh, I'm going to be moving it kind of left and right, find the best position for it, and then I'm going to go ahead and mark the holes that I pre-drilled so I can mount it underneath the uh, table. Okay, with all said and done, here's what we ended up with. As I mentioned, I was going to mount it underneath the table to the right of the yoke, and uh, so this is what we got going on. And, uh, and I found a way to mount my Garmin 660, so I had to make some adjustments there too. It took a good while, but... Let's take a look underneath and see what we got going on in terms of the clamp. So that's pretty much it right there. Uh, it's just a plate that goes across the top of the throttle quadrant mounted to the, the instrument mounting points uh, that are factory installed using the factory screws. And then uh, again, I, I screwed it into the bottom of the desk itself. So that's, that's the throttle quadrant installed. And now I'm going to go ahead and get it all configured and uh, give it a test flight and see what we got. All right, so here's the final setup. Uh, what we've got here is a widescreen. Uh, it's actually a curved widescreen 4K monitor, and that's what I use uh, for flight simulation. And then to the right, I have a 4K monitor, what uh, I use to bring up charts and other information relevant to the flight. And there on the left, I've got my iPad mini with uh, four flight brought up. And uh, as you can see right there, we have the airport diagram for the airport we're currently at. And there's the honeycomb yoke that I installed uh, probably about two months ago now. And I did a separate video on that. There's the rudder pedals. Those are a SciTech product. And then uh, here, of course, is the installed throttle quadrant the uh, honeycomb throttle quadrant and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about that and and uh, the setup and i'll talk about uh i'll talk about some of the features and i'll uh, give you my opinion on uh, on uh, the uh, throttle quadrant overall there to the right i have a garmin era 660 gps that's also synced uh, to x plane right now so both the ipad mini with four flight and the era 660 are seeing the same thing and it's showing our position on the airport right now Okay, so let's zero in on the Honeycomb Throttle Quadrant and talk a little bit about its features. Right now, I've got this set up for a general aviation twin-engine piston airplane. I'm flying the Beechcraft Baron, and we'll do a little test flight, and uh, I'll show you uh, how this works, give you my opinion. When you set this up, you can set it up also for a uh, multi-engine um, turbine airplane, a commercial airliner. All of these levers are removable. See if I can do this one-handed. So these come off. And there are contact points here for relevant uh, features for each of the controls. And uh, they slide on and off quite easily. And then there it is with the throttle control reinstalled. So they're quite easy to remove. So let's talk a little bit about uh, how to set it up. Initially out of the box, when you hook this up to your computer, you're not gonna get these LED uh, displays uh, here. For example, I'm activating the autopilot and setting heading altitude and various things. So these, these are illuminating uh, as they should, but out of the box, that's not gonna happen. You're gonna need to use a separate program. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that first. 
All right, let's dive into this now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Honeycomb Aeronautical, right? This is their website right here, and here is the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. When you click on that, it's going to bring up the Bravo Throttle Quadrant page. Uh, so this has uh, all the relevant information about the Throttle Quadrant. And if you go down here, uh, it talks about software compatibility. And if you have, if you fly the Airbus 319 uh, A380, that there's an optional, um, there's an optional lever package uh, that you can install. So if you go down here to download Honeycomb software and view downloads, uh, depending on whatever platform it is that you fly, those are gonna, those options are gonna come up right here. In my case, I fly X Plane Windows, so I downloaded that. And uh, once you download and install it, it's going to bring up this program right here, which is the Honeycomb Configurator. And as I said earlier, this is necessary in order for you to uh, have the LEDs illuminate uh, on your throttle quadrant when you're flying it. Otherwise, they will not. So what you're going to do in here, and I'm not going to go into great detail, and frankly, I got really frustrated with this because uh, I was trying to set everything up here in the Honeycomb Configurator. And in the end, uh, I, I went ahead and just created a simple profile. I didn't... Um, I I didn't actually program any features in here. I simply created a profile, and once I did that, all of my LEDs came alive on my my Bravo Throttle Quadrant in X-Plane. What I did, though, is in X-Plane, I, I set these up uh, in X-Plane and, uh, and just didn't do it here in the Honeycomb Configurator because, it, it, again, I'm, I'm not a computer expert by any stretch, uh, and I got, I got a little bit frustrated. Maybe you'll have some better luck trying to set these up in here. I watched some tutorials on it, and uh, it, it's, frankly, it didn't help. So I set them up as you normally would set up a joystick and, uh, and a keyboard uh, options in X-Plane itself. But you do need to create the profile, and uh, here if we go to X-Plane, uh, there is the uh, Baron 58 that uh, we're going to be flying here in a little bit as we test out the uh, Quadrant. So if you go up here to uh, Plugins, the uh, plugin that's going to appear is the Honeycomb right here, and then uh, you've got the uh, Throttle Quadrant. It does show the yoke, uh, but I didn't mess with that, because um, something tells me that they, they haven't really developed the software for that, so I left that alone. But you do need to, to load. The bindings will, will load automatically when you bring it up. Once the plugin is installed, the bindings will load, and once that happens, you're going to have the uh, all of the LEDs illuminate, and they're going to be associated with the appropriate uh, uh, switches in the airplane itself. That is about it for the setup. And uh, the other thing that I want to talk a little bit about here is, so so this is the, let's bring up, this is a, a uh, I'm not sure what platform you fly, but they're all going to have some similar options once you go to joystick. In this case, I'm going to bring up the, Bra the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Uh, let me say, didn't set any of these switches up for a couple of reasons. I may uh, do that. But uh, for now, I didn't. One of the things about the the uh, throttle quadrant is that what your lever controls are kind of in the way of these switches. You can get to them, but you you do have to kind of reach down behind the uh, levers in order to get to them. I didn't set those up for now. The other thing I want to point out is this selector switch right here is designed in order for you to, to select the appropriate feature here and then be able to increase or decrease that function using this knob. In my experience, I didn't find it useful for a couple of reasons, so I didn't set it up. And the reason is, once I tried setting it up, once you rotate this knob through the different functions, it started to change some of the settings that I had here, and I didn't like that. I don't want that to happen. So um, I do use these switches all, all here, the heading, nav, approach, uh, reverse course for back course, um, altitude, vertical speed. I did not set up the indicated airspeed option. I also found that kind of frustrating, so I left that alone. These are all set up, however. And uh, the gear lever, I, I set that up. Flaps, reverse thrust, those are all things that you're going to have to set up here in X-Plane using these options. And then, of course, keyboard, you're going to want to set that up as you normally would based on the airplane that you're flying. Now, the other thing is, and I'm going to go back to this here, uh, the other thing is that when you set up the joystick, it's going to it's going to uh, set up for the specific airplane that you're flying. In this case, it's the uh, BE-58, Bravo Echo 5A, which is the Beechcraft Baron. But I've also got profiles uh, for a number of other airplanes here. Uh, the uh, Cessna Citation, King Air BE-20, 
20 is the King Air uh, 200. And uh, so those are those, some of the air airplanes that I fly. And so it'll automatically bring up whatever profile you set up in this throttle quadrant and the yoke for that matter will will bring up those specific settings that you have for that airplane automatically, which is kind of cool because I've configured the switches differently based on the airplane that I'm flying. Okay, here we are in the cockpit. Now, uh, now we're going to go to the uh, iPhone video. And again, I'm going to try to manage the takeoff and uh, hold that thing in my hand and film kind of film the throttle quadrant back and forth between the screen and throttle quadrant. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're again holding short runway 17, getting ready for takeoff. And uh, everything's set up right now. I have the mixer set to full rich, prop controls full forward, uh, and the uh, throttle controls I have set for 1,000 RPMs. Uh, right now, I'm going to kind of zoom in here as best I can. And you could see right now illuminated is parking brake, which I have set. Not sure what's going on here. It shows a low hydraulic pressure. That that seems to come up no matter what airplane I fly. That's something I'll look into. Uh, here's the flap uh, control. Gear lever, of course, is down, and we're displaying three green LEDs. Uh, nothing right now is illuminated on the autopilot. I'm going to change that here in a second. All right, so now I'm going to pan over to the screen, and that's going to show our autopilot in the airplane. So I'm going to go ahead and activate right now the uh, heading, right? So that's active. Now I'm going to pan back over here to the throttle quadrant, and you can see now that the, the heading button is now illuminated. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press the nav button. Here again, it is illuminated. Autopilot is off, I'm gonna pan back over here. And now you can see, now that I activated the nav button on the throttle quadrant, it's now illuminated the airplane. So it's doing what it's supposed to. So let's go ahead and get it set up and uh, get ready for our takeoff. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here as best I can. So we're going to set our vertical speed for a climb right now. I have it set for 1,200 feet per minute. I'm going to arm the, uh, I'm going to climb to 15,000 feet, and I'm going to go ahead and arm the altitude for our climb out. So right now I'm going to dis disable nav. We're going to fly uh, runway heading via the bug initially. So everything's set right now. Uh, the yaw dampener I'm going to go ahead and activate. So uh, once we're airborne, I'll go ahead and turn on the autopilot. Now I'm just going to pan back over here to the throttle quadrant just to show you. Okay, so everything that should be illuminated is illuminated. So we have heading, altitude, and vertical speed. Uh, those are good to go. All right. All right, it was my intention to try to hold the iPhone, film the throttle quadrant, manage the controls, and also the uh, control wheel while trying to execute the takeoff. That was too much to manage. So what we're going to do here is we're going to join after takeoff and en route and discuss the throttle quadrant further. All right, now that we've just taken off and we're in our climb, since we're flying a normally aspirated engine, we're going to need to lean the fuel air mixture for best power. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm adjusting the fuel air mixture for peak exhaust gas temperature by looking at the gauge and then going slightly rich of peak for best power. Now let's pan back over to the throttle quadrant and make sure all the switches are appropriately illuminated. As you can see right there, we have nav, altitude, and vertical speed are all illuminated. You can see the autopilot switch there is active. And there's that uh, hydraulic pressure enunciator. I still need to look into why that's illuminating. There we have the gear handle up and the indicator lights are no longer illuminated. They do illuminate red while in transit. Green, of course, when they're down. The trim wheel works perfectly. I'm not going to manipulate that right now. And here we have a friction adjustment for the levers. I find that the setting to the minimum friction works best for me. All right, so here we are in the flight deck, and I'll go ahead and bring up four flight just to show you our present location. And as you can see, four flight's indicating that there's some icing, uh, more severe icing here, less so here. Uh, but we're above the clouds so right now, have all of the anti-ice deactivated. And I have everything set right now. I have uh, a set for best mixture. I adjusted the mixture controls to peak EGT and went about 50 degrees rich of peak. You could also go lean of peak for fuel economy. Uh, but uh, in order to achieve the best speed, um, I, pr I prefer to lean rich of peak. And the prop controls are set right now for uh, 2,500 RPMs, as indicated right there. And uh, throttles are full forward, and we're achieving a ground speed right now of 255 miles per hour. And uh, that translates over here to 222 knots of ground speed. We're heading over to the Golf Romeo India VOR, and uh, then we're going to do the Howery to arrival. 
let's uh, switch back to the uh, iPhone video and we'll wrap up by giving my overall opinion of the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. So overall, fantastic addition to the flight deck. Um, in my experience, however, it was a little bit cumbersome setting it up. Uh, that's probably due to my computer illiteracy, but uh, hopefully you'll have a better experience. You do need to load the Honeycomb configurator in order to get the functionality of the LEDs. I recommend not trying to use the configurator to set up the functionality of all the switches, buttons, and levers. I think you're better off doing that in your simulator, in my case, X-Plane. But again, in order to get the LEDs, you have to use a configurator, set up a profile so that your plug-in can uh, pull in all the bindings and uh, load them into your simulator. Uh, so again, the other, the other thing I mentioned is these switches, once these levers are in the forward position, are a little bit hard to get to. Nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and set those up at some point in the near future. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to get your hand also on the honeycomb yoke to complement it. Uh, it's a fantastic setup, and hopefully in the near future, they'll come up with some rudder pedals so that I can replace the SciTech rudder pedals and have a full honeycomb system. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again on next flight.